Welcome to The Breakdown. I'm your host, Diane Rembert, avid reader, award-winning literary blogger, and the founder of Diamond's Literary World, which is my footprint in the literary industry. Today, I want to first begin um, by saying I'm wearing, on Wednesdays, we wear pink, um, which is a, a, a very popular um saying from Mean Girls, which is my mini-me, my princess. It's her favorite movie. I can't tell you how many times we have broken that movie and had to replace it because she simply loves Mean Girls. So hopefully, I'm, I have to check. I think it's on Netflix. I'm not sure. So hopefully we don't have to buy it. Well, she's 17 now. So, um, But anywho, today I want to talk to you um, about the final... Um, the final installment, um, the conclusion to the Reverend Curtis Black series. This is book number 15. Yes, if you have not been following the series, it is book number 15. Um, and it's a bittersweet moment for me because I, for one, I'm a co-worker introduced me to this family, I want to say about... 15 years ago and um, when I first was introduced to the, the, the family, the black family, um, or to Reverend Curtis Black as I was first introduced um, to him as, there were three family members. That was Curtis, his wife Tanya, and their daughter Alicia. Fast forward to Better Late Than Never. Which is again book number 15. Um, my copy may look a little different from yours because I received a um, advanced reader copy from the actual publicist at Grand Central Publishing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, her name is Linda. So I want to thank you Linda. You're amazing. Um, now fast forward. This family um, has seen many of marriages, many of divorces, um, many of births, a couple of deaths. Um, and so when I did the overall calculation, I calculated 15 plus. So, um, and how apropos that 15 plus in book number 15. Um, but if you're following this series, I don't want to give too much away. Because, of course, I do want you to go and pick up this book by New York Times bestselling author Kimberly Lawson Ruby. Amazing lady. I'm so humble. So down to earth. I, I, I just loved meeting her. I love watching videos of her. I love reading her work because her passion comes through in, in her personality. It comes through in her writing. It comes through in her speaking. Um, it comes through in her acknowledgments of your post. So I just want to say that about um, Kimberly Lawson Roby. Um, this book, Better Late Than Never, um, again, you know, is the conclusion. And, and we actually get a backdrop. Um, it goes back a little bit and it actually explains to us um, Curtis's tumultuous childhood. Um, we know that he was estranged from his mother and his sister, but we never knew why. Um, and this book clearly tells you why Curtis felt the need to leave the home at 18 and never to return. Um, if you recall, maybe about four or five books back, um, it was a an argument amongst him and his sister um, when the mother passed because they felt like he abandoned them. Um, but when you read this book, you will find out that it is just fully so. Um, Curtis's father was a very troubled man. Um, he was bitter and angry for a lot of reasons. Again, all you find it all out in this book. Um, and so he took it out on his family. And I found that, you know, as I was reading this, I, I, you know, it made me think about, think about some of the people in your life that you know. 
And they may have wanted their life to take on one course, but due to, you know, a circumstance, something happened, and they had to put their dream on the back burner in order to deal with real life. And some people are bitter, and some people are angry, and this was the case with Curtis's father. Um, and he never understood why his mother never took up for him. Um, but he finds out why. And when his sister um, explains it to him, he gets a deeper understanding and he's faced to deal with his past. Now let me just also go back and say that um, we see a relationship restored between Curtis and his sister because... She is, I, I, well, this is the one little spoiler that I will give you. She has been diagnosed with a terminally ill disease. And so her, her husband calls her brother because he feels like that is a relationship that needs to be restored. And restored it was. A short period of time, but they learned so much about each other. They had so many years to make up for. And I think they did it in a fashionable way. Um, tore at my heart, of course. Um, but beautifully done. Oh my God, Kimberla, amazing job. Now, Charlotte. We find in this book that Charlotte is very unhappy. She's going, actually going through um, a bout of depression. Because she realizes that she's not happy in her role as first lady. She's not happy um, in her marriage. She's not happy in herself. Um, and she's starting to get these urges and these desires for um, previous addictions. And so we watch her struggle. And... Um, Charlotte, unfortunately, goes down a road, and just like most addicts that feel like they're hiding it from somebody, she's not hiding it from anybody but herself. Um, and the outcome, all I'm going to say about that is it's very, very bittersweet. Um, I, I, I don't know what else to say. It's very hard to watch somebody do things to themselves. Um, and again, they, they feel like nobody knows but, but them. So that's what Charlotte is dealing with in this book. And unfortunately, some people try to use it to their advantage. One of which is Little Miss Curtina. Oh, I just wanted to just go through the pages. Just become ink on paper, <laughs> if you will. And just snatch her up. And just shake some life and some sense into Little Miss Curtina. But again, as we know, um, all of Curtis's children... They, at some point, emulate some of the characteristics of their father. And so, Cortina is, um, she's acting like a spoiled teenager at 12, which she is. I'm just going to put it out there. Um, but she's rebelling because she's hurting and nobody knows why. And so, she's doing things that are very unbecoming of her character. And, um, like I said, you just want to shake this little girl. But then you start to realize that there are things going on with Cortina as well. Um, so all I can say is phenomenal job, Kimberla. Definitely five star. Please go out and get... Don't start with this book. You guys, it's book number 15, Okay. Um, the first book in this series is Casting the First Stone. I believe book number two is Better Late Than... No, um, um, 
it's a thin line. But anyway, in the beginning of each one of the books, it tells you the order of the series. Um, but definitely casting with the first stone. Uh, the, you guys know I read straight through the last three books of the series, which was um, A Sinful Calling, Sin of a Woman, and now Better Late Than Never. So I'm looking forward to um, the direction that uh, Kimberla is going into. I, I know what she told us at the Christian Book Lovers Retreat. And so I'm looking forward to it. But I'm, I, I, you know, have not come across a book that I have not um, really liked by her. Um, very moving. Um, very thought-provoking. And again, forgiveness, restoration. And the overall theme of the book is it's better late than never no matter how long it's been since you've talked to a family member or a friend no matter how long it's been since um and you say there's just no way we can repair this relationship i don't care you know it's better late than never you know that's even in our in our walk you know our spiritual journey it's never too late to make a difference so that's my word for today. I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thank you for telling a friend. I want to thank um, Strawberry. And uh, Strawberry was a young lady that reached out to me. She's also a vlogger and a booktuber. And she reached out to me and she let me know that I had reached a um, hundred subscribers and so I want to thank you guys because I couldn't do this without you I would I wouldn't do it without you so thank you for supporting me thank you for um, recommending books thank you for taking my recommendations thank you for supporting the authors in this great literary industry now I've taken up enough of your time go pick up a book happy reading happy Labor Day um, Labor Day is coming up. So, you know, in preparation for that, happy Labor Day. And, um, as always, be blessed. Bye.